All right, we're going to look at the sprites in GameMaker Studio 2. If you're familiar with GameMaker 1. Point whatever, it's very similar, although we do have a lot of new options that we can use with our sprites. So our resources are on the right-hand side by default now, and the trees look pretty much the same. Um, we start with sprite here, and to create a sprite, we simply click on that, and right click and create a sprite. We can add existing sprite. Uh, we can add it from the lot from our library. We can add a group here, which if we have a lot of sprites, we can group them together based on what they do, what they look like, however we want to organize that. We can collapse all of them or we can open them in the explorer. So I'm going to open up create right now. Uh, however, I'm going to pull in some sprites that are pre-made and the sprites we're going to use in throughout this tutorial are made by Riley Gumbark and I'll provide a link below these videos. Uh, they are open source but he does ask that if you use them that you give him credit for that. So we start here with this window. I'm going to go import one of our players from that pack and um, then we'll visit each of these things independently of each other. Okay, so now we can see that our size is 289 pixels wide, 224 pixels high. We can click this box here, and that gives us the current size and the preview size. So once we start resizing our sprites, this will change. Here we can choose to scale it, or we can just resize the canvas itself. So if we scale it, right here under maintain aspect ratio what that's going to do is basically maintain our proportions so if we have this unchecked we can actually make it skewed either too high or too wide we can type in a value here so currently it's 289 if we type 400 and we see scale in pixels or scale in percent And we can see that here, this has changed from 400 to 310 because we have the aspect ratio checked. So our 310 changed when we changed our 400. Now, if we resize the canvas, what that does is that basically makes the extra around the sprite bigger, but not necessarily the sprite. So we can choose what corner we want to anchor so if we corner so if we anchor the upper left hand corner our canvas will grow on the right hand side and below it's not going to grow any behind the anchor if we choose the middle top anchor for instance it will grow on the left the bottom and the right but it will not grow above it and you can look at those arrows and tell which way it's going to grow. If you cho choose the center, it's basically going to grow all the way around the square here. And you can, again, choose between pixels and percentage. And if you want to maintain the aspect ratio here, you can. So I'm going to cancel that because I do not want to resize our image. Here we have the animation. So I've pulled in, when I imported our sprite, I imported several different pictures. And if you play that, we can see the animation happening. We can change our speed here, which is just a preview speed. This does not affect the actual game. So if we come in here, once we get the game going, and we change the speed, it's just going to show us what it's going to look like if we change the speed in code. We can take the center point now 
and we can place it wherever we want just simply by clicking and dragging this little plus sign. If we click on preview mask, now we can actually see the mask that's around the character by this transparent box. If we click collision mask, this arrow beside collision mask, we can change the settings for our collision mask. So for instance, by default it's automatic for the mode. We can change it to full image, which will encapsulate the entire image of the sprite or we can change it to manual so that we can fine tune the mask. It also gives us the option instead of typing it in here we can grab these little black boxes and we can drag the mask to where we want it to be. So in this case we don't know exactly which pixels we want to put in the box but if we click and drag it will set them for us. The tolerance is basically asking which pixel should I be looking at and if you increase the tolerance you'll increase the size of your mask and it's based on colored pixels in your sprite. Right here under the type rectangle we can choose ellipse so it's basically more like an oval and it gives us the diamond shape as well. Under precise, precise is going to try to trace the sprite and that's where this tolerance comes into play. Here we can see when we choose the precise that we have some mask outside of our sprite so we can adjust this tolerance to take away this area that doesn't include any of our drawing for our sprite and the tolerance can go from 0 to 255. Now the relevance of that number is so under the tolerance we can set it all the way up to 255 and you can see that grabs everything that's colored inside of your sprite and it should leave nothing that's not colored under a mask. We can zoom in to our sprite here and we can see that it does a pretty good job of selecting precise mask for this. Now I have intentionally skipped over the edit image button because GameMaker Studio 2 has incorporated a lot of new tools in the sprite editor. I'm going to create a whole separate tutorial on the sprite editor itself. I'm also going to create a separate tutorial on the frames per second and frames per game frame to explain that a little bit better. Mm -hmm.